All right, so we are live. So I wanted to welcome Peter here. Um, I know a lot of you are probably already met Peter, if not through his posts, all his sharing that he's been doing in the group. So Peter is going to be walking us through one of the most challenging things, well, for a lot of people, when it comes to sales, which is the sales conversation. And Peter has been in this space for the 36 years, and he wants to share that experience with you because he also understands what it takes to to have that conversation, but have that conversation where it's more focused on the buyer as opposed to focused on everything else, all the tactics and everything that's out there. So Peter is an online sales sage, and he he literally <laughs> deems himself as the village marketer. So very excited to have Peter here. Um, I'm not going to do your bio any justice. So I want to get you to just jump in and tell me and tell us about what you do and a little bit who you are, because Peter has such an interesting background. And I want him to just kind of share a little bit about that and tell us what he does. Hi, Shona. Thank you very Hello. much. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, very quickly okay because i'm an oldie and and i could spend all day talking about just my bio who wants to hear all that rubbish right i'm an aussie i'm a proud aussie um uh, i've been living in thailand for many years now but i, I was previously married in australia and i've got two wonderful adult children who have achieved incredible levels and i can't take much credit for that because i'm living here in thailand but i'm so proud of them as well then they're called Kirsty and Matt. And at the same time, I've also married to a Thai lady here, and we've got two daughters and a granddaughter. So I'm sort of blessed in that way, okay? Oh, look at you. Now, the reason why I call myself a, a vi the village marketer is because many years ago, well, I can't remember exactly how many years ago, but let's 15 years ago, my wife said to me, Peter, can we move to the village where my parents live? Because we need to help them. Because in Thailand, there's no such thing as social security or retirement villages and things. It's their culture to take care of their family. <clears throat> so I said, okay, we'll do that. What a culture shock that was. I've been <laughs> here before, but to be here and live here are two different things, right? Wow. And I thought, what am I going to do now? I am bored. Well, I can only talk to the buffaloes for so long, right? <laughs> so I thought, because I'd spent 16 years as a teacher in Australia and loved it, but left there because I got to the stage of being a deputy principal, and that was getting into the area of administration. And Shauna, I'm an administration nightmare, so I think this is not for me. So I left and went into the sales arena, and I've been there ever since. And so what I've done is decided to combine my teaching skills because I love teaching. I really love teaching, right? Mm -hmm. Combine that with the sales experience I've had. And the, the obvious thing was to come as a coach. So that's what I've been doing for the last many years, coaching people to achieve their results without feeling sleazy and salesy because I hate that sort of rubbish. Okay. <laughs> I think we all do. I think yeah. we all do. And you know what was when when I first met Peter, he actually sent me such a nice voice note and it just really built that connection. So when he says that he doesn't like sleazy, salesy stuff, like he is definitely big on relationships. So definitely speaks, um, walks the talk. Well, that's true. And I'll be, actually we'll come back to that sooner later. Okay, that's an important part of how people should connect with people. So we'll do that a little later. All right. So today we're talking about like the the topic that most people don't enjoy. And you mentioned a lot of why people don't enjoy this topic because they it doesn't it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel natural to them. And it's not just about sales, but it's really just a sales conversation piece that they go through. So why do you think people feel this way? about the sales conversation? Because they are thinking the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Because they are thinking, 
how can I get this person to become a customer? Mm. They are thinking, what can I do to get them to impress them with the product, the, the solution, the offer, whatever I have, okay? Mm. And that thinking is all about me, 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 all right? And that's, that is the absolute reverse of how you should do it. I mean, what I'm about to share with you today is not all my originality. I mean, I'm, I'm good at learning from people and I love to learn. And I've, and I've been blessed to have many coaches, okay? Including Ari Galper and Steve Brosman and Michael Griffiths and, and James Wedmore. All these people, have, they've been mentors and coaches of mine. And I've just taken what they've taught me and then put my own twist on it in order to make it feel comfortable for me, all right? Mm -hmm. But throughout all of that, the thing I've learned more than anything is the fact that the reason why people don't like sales is the word sales. Because it's got all these connotations, right, of the used car salesman with the gold chain around their neck and all <laughs> that sort of stuff, right? And the fact that they feel uncomfortable selling their services because they, they just, to reach out to, if, for me to reach out to Shauna to sell my services is a very challenging thing for many people to do. And mm -hmm. I respect that. I respect that. But there's a way to do it that is a lot less stressful and you can do it without any tension at all. So I'm not sure I'm going with answering your question, but what else would you like to know? <laughs> no, that actually answers the question. And, you know, I think it's important for people to take away the fact the what you just said about sales, because if you're going in thinking of sales and thinking of all the things that come with sales, yes, you're going to have that experience and yes, you're going to feel the way you do. Right. So I think you did answer the question and I think that was, that was right on point. Okay. Uh, so mindset. It's your mindset. Okay. You've got to have a caring, sharing, helping, empowering mindset, not trying to sell people, but to serve them. That's the key. And, you know, so so one of the things, and I and I come from a, a coaching background, and I'm just gonna go off just a little bit for you. Um, so one of the things I run into with people is the straddling the pro bono and how much freebies they should give during that conversation. So I get people who would say, "Well, I had a full coaching conversation during that call, and nothing happened. They they didn't." They didn't buy. They didn't. They didn't call me back. They didn't send respond to my email. Why do you think people are doing that? Because they're giving away free consultancy, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the key issue. And if we could share the screen, we could show them more. But we can do that some other time. The key issue is mm -hmm. when you are talking to a potential client, right? The, the number one thing you can do is to get them to clarify to themselves what their challenges are. And they may not know them, Shauna, right? Mm. But in order to do that, you need to earn the right to ask the questions in the first place, right? Because because who the heck is Peter Beckham? They don't know me from a bar of soap, right? Why should I be asking Shauna all these personal questions about her challenges and pain points? I don't have the right to do that. So I have to earn that right to do that. And to do that, I need to give you something of value, mm -hmm. all right? Over a period of time and build a relationship based on trust. And if you have, if you have a resonance with people, and they resonate with you, then they can learn to respect you. And if they learn to respect you, then they can be inspired by you. And if they're going to be inspired by you, guess what? Then you're in a situation to be able to talk to them about what their real problems are. So and so I, I, I love that because it ties back into the next question that I have for you, Peter. Like, okay. what are some of the mistakes that they make when they're having these conversations? <laughs> Because I know there's like a ton of mistakes that people make, but what are some of them that you've seen? Okay. And and by the way, we still make them in here. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect, right? <laughs> but here's some of the most common ones. Okay. First of all, chasing people. You talked about following up with people, okay? If you mm -hmm. give too much information in a in a 
conversation with somebody, they may make me think, well, I don't need Shauna anymore. Okay, because she just told me what to do. Well, that was a pretty that was a pretty silly thing for Shauna to do. What you should have done is clarify for her what her problem or his problem is, mm -hmm. but do not offer the solution, right? But get them to be honest with themselves. Is this really what your problem is? Okay. Because then it raises the other issue. We're talking about the problems that people face, right? When it comes to or mistakes they make. One of the biggest mistakes they make is they try to sell this stuff too quickly. Because they're enthusiastic about it, because they got they're passionate about it, and they love what they can do for people, and they assume that everyone else thinks the same way. Well, they don't. People don't give a darn. They haven't got a they don't really care what Sean or Peter have got. All they want to know is what can you do for them not what do you have what they don't care how long you've been in business they don't care how qualified you are none of that can you help them right yes, exactly so and one is that stop assuming that they think they'd be interested to stop chasing if you're chasing people oh you're putting yourself in a really difficult position Sure, you need to follow up with people, but there's a way to follow up with people, which is really easy. But if you're chasing people, who's in control, Shauna? It's obviously them. Correct. Okay. And what are they thinking about you chasing them? What is, what's your situation as far as they're concerned? You are your authority and your reputation and everything that was going down and down and down and down because you're a darn nuisance. <laughs> right? so what you need to do is work out a way to follow up with people in in a way that protects your reputation keeps your integrity in place has empathy has understanding mm -hmm. but more important that gets their attention so if you had if you had given me something what i would this, what this is what you shouldn't do and many many people do this i make mistakes Mm -hmm. Hey, Shauna, I'm just following up to see what you think about X. Or I'm just checking out, or I'm just circling back, or I'm just... You know, just checking in. Checking <laughs> in. Who uses terms like that, Shauna? <laughs> I'm going to say me. <laughs> Sales people. Sales people use that. Okay? And when they hear... Oh, Corporate. I'm just, I'm just following up, I'm just checking in, I'm just whatever it is, they're thinking, oh my God, what do you want to do now, right? <laughs> so much easier to do this instead. I would say, hey, Shauna, okay? I just would like to get your feedback on what I gave you before. Have you had the chance to look at it yet? As simple as that. That sounds really interesting. That's a good, that's a good way to, to have the conversation, but not have the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. That you're following up so how if, if, they haven't, if they haven't had it yet if they haven't and most times they haven't done it yet right let's mm. be honest they haven't done it. so you simply say to them okay look that's fine okay i don't want to bother you your time's important and so is my time but i but i would love your feedback because it's important to me to make sure i can give you the best service possible so when would you think it would be the, the most appropriate time for me to get back to you and you are asking permission. You're putting the ball in their court. You're not telling them this is what you should do. Mm. So there's a, so is there like a lucky or no lucky number? But is there like a, a a best number of times that you should be following up? Like, is there like a standard that you know is it two, three follow ups that you check in to say, okay, first. Um, did you have a chance to look at the documents, second, third, fourth? How does it work? Well, it depends. I mean, you can look at training programs and they'll tell you that that's, you need 10, 12 or 15 personal touch points in order to get people to make a decision to become a client, right? That, to me, is a lot of rubbish, to be quite frank, okay? Because all you're doing is just driving people mad and they're probably going to buy it to get rid of it, then they're going to can it anyway, right? <laughs> What I would what I would truly suggest is this: that if you have given the person the best value you can to clarify with them and for them what is their major problem, 
and got them to commit to themselves that, yes, this is my problem. And by the way, this is not easy to do. It's an incredible service that, that people should offer to people. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy to do because you've got to dig deep. Put it another way. You've got to be like a doctor. You've got to diagnose where's the pain? How long has it been that way? What are they? Diagnose before you, before you subscribe anything. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, 100%. No, that yeah. makes sense. So, we, because too many people are prescribing. Shauna says, oh, Peter, the, my problem, I, here's my example. Being a, let's put a sales coach on, right, for example. Three things that problem have, people have. One, getting quality leads. Mm -hmm. Two, converting the leads into customers. And three, nurturing the customers into advocates. So they can refer people and be and and help build the business. They're the three most common challenges a lot of small business people have. All right. Yeah. No. I. I. And the thing is, I've. Um, so I, I know initially when I started, that was one of the things that got drilled into me because sales was not my jam, and it still isn't. But I I've come to a state where I do it fairly I fairly well enough where. I do, I get good retention and it usually comes from, from that. Um, so when I think of the sales conversation, one of the things that they've always, they used to start off with is you need to have a sales script, right? And I remember starting off with a sales script and feeling so, so robotic and so uncomfortable in that process. And you know, over time, I got I, I well, I think I did it two or three times and I ditched it because it just didn't feel right. And I just kind of went with the flow with the conversation. But do you think people need to have a sales script? No. Okay. However, they do need something to guide a conversation. All right. People are looking for leadership. They're not looking for people to sit around and let, let me rephrase this. The worst thing you can do is get on a call with someone that you don't know and start saying, well, how are you today? And what, what's the name of your dog? And, I mean, people that drives people crazy, right? Because that is false friendship rubbish. Okay? This is, and I'm going to answer your question in an indirect way and come back to it. What I help people to do is I say, get on a call with Shauna, which we did, by the way, Shauna, get on a call with Shauna and just talk about them personally. Don't mention business, correct? That's what we did. Yes. Right? And my, my purpose was to build a relationship with Shauna. I had no hidden agenda. I had no idea we we're going to be doing this. And that's the beauty of having these types of conversations. Yes. Because you are genuinely wanting to get to understand and know people, all right? And you spend 10 or 15 minutes doing it. That's all you need to do. Yeah. And that's what led us to this, right? And there was, did you feel any tension or any pressure in our conversation? There you go. It's all about, you know, it's it's interesting. And I'm glad that you, you, you kind of took our example. And even though there wasn't really that transaction, it really was the relationship like when it came down to it we were we didn't know each other <laughs> we had right. no idea right but and we're still know. getting to know each other right exactly and that's the point i'm getting at stop pushing people too quickly to get to a point where you th you think they need your solution don't do that and and shauna you may never ever become a client of mine but that doesn't matter I mean, I've got a relationship with Shauna, right? And who knows, we may be able to do some collaboration together or whatever. I mean, to me, it's an exciting way of thinking about things. Instead of thinking, I've got this stuff to sell. How can I sell it to her? That's the message I'm really trying to get people to understand. Exactly. So and if you take that out of the conversation, the tension and the pressure and the stress goes. Okay. And I and you know I use voice clips a lot because it's easier to, to for me to to leave. I mean I'm a terrible typist. That's another reason I do it. Right? <laughs> but there's I always a reason clips. behind that. <laughs> well, yeah, but to build a relationship, okay, with that. And 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 when people reach out to me, 
I will I will respond with a voice clip, but I, this is nothing to do with a sales pitch. I simply express the fact that I am delighted to accept them as a connection on LinkedIn or as a new friend on Facebook or whatever I make, whatever it is, right? And I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Okay, that's it. All right, and, and people respond to that. They, if I had, if I had done it in text format and got all the spelling right, which would be a challenge for me anyway with my typing skills, right? Then they probably wouldn't have responded anyway because it would have been too long a message. But I can leave a 15 or 20 second or even a 60 second message and say a lot of things. And and by the way, the other thing, I, and you noticed this, Shauna, I picked out something from you that was interesting to me because I wanted to find out more about it. And it's got to be genuine. You don't lie about it. It's got to be genuine that you'd like to know more about this thing that you saw in Shauna's profile. Yes. All right. Now, by the way, for those who are, and I'm very aware I'm doing all the talking here, so excuse this, but this is, you got me passionate these, you want to say, be careful. <laughs> you can see that he's in his space, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But for those who deal with the LinkedIn area, here's a little tip for you, a really, really effective tip. Mm. When you want to reach out to someone on LinkedIn, and let's say they're a second level connection and you, whatever it is, okay, what you do is you look at the person's profile, but by all means look at what they're about thing, but the most important thing to look at is the recommendations that they've got, right? Look at the recommendations that person's got. Then you send the connection request to the person on LinkedIn and you quote, from the recommendation, a segment of the recommendation, and saying that I was so impressed by what Shauna said about you when she said X, Y, and Z, da, da, da. I'd love to connect with you. That works very well with people. Does very interesting. I've not, I've, you know, and I really should be more on LinkedIn, but I actually am not. But that's actually a really good tip for people who are trying to build a, a, a bigger connection in, in terms of their brand on LinkedIn. So it's always good to have those connections and be able to form that relationship because there's so many people who are coming at it from a very inauthentic way. And I think it's it's it, it would be good for to break the ice a lot easier. Absolutely. And, and, and the key point is to create some memorable moments with people. And that's one of my objectives every day is to create a little memorable moment. And it's easy to do it. You haven't got to be anything special, something different, something unexpected for people, because, you know, and I know on social media in particular, whenever you accept certain people as friends or connections, all of a sudden within a nanosecond, whack, comes all this spam and all this. I mean, that drives me nuts, right? <laughs> all and the they, time. And, and be quite frank, they are not doing their reputation any good either. And I don't know who's teaching them to do that, but it's ridiculous. But if you can be different, use a voice clip, be personal, show real interest, show that you've read their profile, quote something from their recommendations or whatever it is, okay, and express those thoughts in a very natural, non-salesy, just be natural. That is a great way to start a relationship. And to me, that's the magic of selling in the in the 21st century is opening up relationships with people and not having a hidden agenda of where you're going to go with it because you never know. And that's what makes it exciting. So, so I love that you shared that because this actually, you know, it when I started in the online space, that was one of the things that used to annoy the hell out of me. I got used to it because, you know, obviously it's what it is. Um, but it, it goes back to, like you said, what are people teaching them? So what are some of the questions um, that someone who is doing a sales call should really ask when they're having when when they're in front of their ideal clients so what are some of those questions that you would you would say just off the top of your head like to really build that relationship things like that so i know you mentioned a few of them and okay. to find that okay. connection so is there anything specific that you you want to yeah. share you can share okay 
But before I forget that, one other mistake that many people make is they send proposals. Mm. Now, people might think, what do you mean? Of course you've got to send proposals. <laughs> no, you don't. I haven't sent a proposal ever in my life. I send contracts, I send invoices, I send receipts, all that, but I never send a proposal. Because when people ask for a proposal, more than likely they're going to shop it around for somebody else. And you're just providing them with free stuff, right? So I'm advising people, stop sending proposals, right? Please, please don't do that anymore. Now, in terms of the questions you would ask, I'm also aware of something else, Shauna. I read some research very recently. It said, um, it was from, you know, I wrote it down here because I thought I'd forget it. So can I read it to you? Because this is really interesting. Yeah, go for it. This is from the University of Toronto. 94.4% of participants say they would pay attention during a face-to-face -face meeting, 94.4. Mm. But with virtual meetings, it drops to 41.7. Really? That that big of a drop? Yeah. Harvard mm. Business Review, and I can, I can even give you the link to it if you like, but Harvard Business Review in March 2020 said this, attendees often interpret virtual meetings as a license to multitask. <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of that because uh, I, I guess that... I think a lot of people are doing the dishes or doing something while they're doing all of this work. Yeah. So, so anyway, I, I just wanted to put that in place before I hear some questions that you could ask, right? For example, mm -hmm. by the way, remember, you need to earn the right to ask the questions in the first place. Okay. That's, that's important. So how do all they right? earn the right? Like, how would they do that? You earn the right by building trust and resonance with people over a period of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't rush them. You don't rush them. You stop being selfish, stop being needy and greedy and all that sort of stuff, right? Just be genuine and let people come to you. I mean, the key thing to me is I want, with my coaching clients, I, I want them to empower their clients to have memorable moments with their customers as often as they can. And if they do that, the client will come to you. Right now, we've all heard of attraction marketing, but many people take it all the wrong way. But if you can create memorable moments for people, Shauna, I can tell you, they will never forget you. They may not ever become a client, but they may very well become an advocate. So you can't lose. Agreed. Right? So you Agreed. need to earn the right by, I told you before, getting having resonance, then respect, and then the point to be able to inspire people. And you do that by taking the time with them, by sharing some valuable information with them, but by not giving them free consultancy. Share the information that positions you as an authority, all right? but don't teach them. That's wasting your time. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'm glad you, I'm glad you point that out and made it crystal clear for people that if you are going on these calls, do not offer the free the free advice there it just it not only it, it gives people false hope that they've solved the problem but it also it also takes away from the diagnostic work that you should really be doing in that Absolutely. beginning Absolutely. stages and the one thing more than anything else that you're looking for is the truth that's what you want you want the potential client to accept what is the truth of their situation right now and their first answer will be nothing like the truth okay as i said earlier too you've got to be a doctor you've got a diagnosis you've got to keep probing and probing and probing and probing to find out what the real issue is and sometimes you know they don't know okay they really don't know so it's a service you provide to people and by doing that, if you do it the right way, they will say, thank you, my goodness, okay, thank you. And we can talk about what you do the next steps later, but these are the questions you could ask. For example, top of my head, right? <laughs> Shauna, if we were sitting here three years from today and you really kicked butt with your business and you'd, and you'd just achieved everything that was possible to achieve, what would it look like? 
This is a rhetorical question. Are you, no, 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 I'm not answering it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Secondly, how would you measure that? Mm -hmm. Right? Thirdly, so Shauna, what's stopping you from achieving it right now? What what is it? What are the what are the hurdles that you've got right now that are stopping you from achieving what you wanted to achieve? Okay. Now it's it's a way of get you need to keep opening the conversation but at the same time don't push them too hard let them come to you does that make sense yeah no i i definitely can see that and the depending on the question you are getting them to really think and and actually think deeper on what is the real issue yeah what's a real issue I mean, what, where do you want to get to? That's your, clarity, that's your transformation result. That's the outcome you want. Where are you right now? And what's stopping you from getting there? That's basically it, all right? But you do it in a way that is genuine with empathy and you empower them. And more important, you listen. Yes. You listen to the answer. That's why you don't need a script. Because they will give you the script to use by the answers they give you. Yeah. Okay? Then it gets to the difficult point. And the difficult point for many people is when it comes to the money. Right? <laughs> and many people think, oh, oh, you know, I don't know. What, how do you handle this? I'm scared. What happens if they say, no, I need the money. I've got to put vegetables on the table. I've got to, I've got to make sure my family... Stop nagging me because they think I'm wasting my time online. I've got to get a win. All these pressures are there, right? Here's the way to solve that problem when it comes to paying for your services. First of all, make sure you value your services the right way. Do not undercharge. Okay? Do not undercharge. You can find anything you want online when it comes to information people mm -hmm. don't want information they want you to tell them the truth and get them to accept what their needs are and to implement to solve their problem that's what they want and they will only do it with people they feel comfortable with that they resonate with and they respond yes. to all right does, does that make sense a hundred percent. That is, I think it's one of the, it's, um, it, it's, you know, undercharging was one of the things I can say, even when I got started. And I, I, I think I told you, or I mentioned that I also got a sales coach in the early stages. And undercharging was a huge, huge part of it, because I didn't really understand you know, I was coming from a money mindset block that I needed mm -hmm. to kind of get out of. And I was too far deep um, behind. So that in itself really is a huge blockage I knew for me. And um, it's probably for a lot of people. So, so really glad that you brought that up. And, you know, you really got to uh, and people just really got to refocus that it's not an exercise to really um, undercharge yourself because you're you're not clear on what the value is that you're bringing. So it's more of you taking that step back and doing the work that you need in order to get that, get to that next step. So, for... but 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 that doesn't the the elephant's still in the room. Mm -hmm. the okay, payment, the payment, right? Payment. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is because right through the conversation, they're thinking, well, yeah, sure, this is really good. Yeah, I appreciate that. How much is she going to charge me? I'm not sure when she can, can afford this. Oh, I don't know. And, and there'll be 101 million excuses, all right? Okay. And by the way, we all do this. This is normal for us to say, let me think about it. Or I'm not sure. I've got to share with my husband, my wife, or my grandfather, or whatever. This is normal behavior. So you've got to expect that. This is what I suggest you do with people. When it comes to the word investment, then I would say this. Shauna, there are three aspects to the investment in, in order for you to solve the problem that you just convinced me that you were serious about solving. 
the first two elements you can control. Okay, mm -hmm. and they are in priority order. One, do you have the courage, right, to take make the changes necessary to achieve the transformation that you want? Are, are you going to make the change? I can't do that for you, right? Do you have the courage to make the changes? Secondly, time. What is your expectations when it comes to time? If it's tomorrow, then you know darn well this is not a realistic client, right? Because <laughs> we don't really provide that sort of service, right? Those are miracles. Those yeah. are <laughs> magic go tricks. Next, yeah, go next door for the miracles, right? <laughs> and the other aspect about time is are you prepared and willing to commit your time in order to take what I'm going to teach you to achieve the transformation and the outcome that you want? So you, they control those first two, but they are critical, right? Change and time. Because if they aren't prepared to do the change in the time, there's no point in talking about the investment because it's a waste of time. But if they are committed to the, those things, then you can mention, well, the third element is money, okay? And that money really is, you may perceive that to be expensive or whatever it is. However, that is a little unfair on yourself because we haven't implemented anything yet, all right? So all I'm saying to you is, and, and by the way, never ever let people think of it as an expense. Your services are an investment in their future, okay? That's really what it is. And you've got to believe in the value that you give to people. You really have to believe in that. And if you are overcharging, then you're an idiot, right? And if you're undercharging, you're also an idiot. You've got to find a sweet spot and it takes some time. <laughs> to do that right? <laughs> so so change time and money are the three elements of investment that people have to get their head around all right okay. so change time and money are the the three pillars from for the conversation three pillars of the investment conversation when it gets to that point and by the way before you even do that I mean, we're jumping a little bit all over the place here because I'm trying to squeeze so much into a limited amount of time for you. Once you've taken through people through a process that clarifies where they are right now mm -hmm. and, and it's clarified, yes, they want the transformation, okay? Then what you need to do then is, is ask a very simple question. And you could call the, I mean, you call this a closing question, but I hate that word. I really don't like the word. I don't like the word pitching. I don't like the word closing either, right? <laughs> but if I had taken Shauna through this process, I'd say to Shauna, okay, Shauna, where do you want to go from here? I'm putting the ball in your court. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm empowering you to make the decision. Or Shauna, what would you like to do next? It's your call. I'm not pushing you to make a decision. It's your call. Can you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. And this actually ties back into the other question that I have for you. So for people who are now looking to grow their business and, you know, do all the things, do all the things that they need to structure their offer, um, create an offer variation. A lot of times it's going from a more lower ticket to a higher ticket offer. Um, what are some of the, the ways that they can prepare for that conversation? Because usually the conversation is it, you know, fundamentally it's the same conversation, but the ticket, the dollar ticket is definitely higher. So what, would it would the conversation need to change or would it stay the same or what 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 are what do you think they would need to prepare for that conversation we're talking we're talking price aren't we we're talking price but we should be talking investment ah. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm trying to well, i wasn't being rude you know, sorry i was just being persistent. no 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 when, take it that way. <laughs> when people have that challenge, right? Mm -hmm. The reason they've got that challenge is because they're focusing on their offer. They're not focusing on the prospect's needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And to keep it short because of time frames we got, here's a clever way you can do it. You can have you can have a range of of investment options for your services. Mm -hmm. And let's make one up, okay? Let's say um, you can have one for five thousand dollars. You can have one for for two thousand five hundred dollars, or you can have one for nine hundred and ninety seven dollars. Now I'm talking about these are services where you are providing your valuable time with them, not pre-done videos, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. And a clever way to do it is this: if people say, "Oh, look, I'd love to work with you, Shauna, but I just don't have the five thousand dollars." Even though I could get on the call with you every day, every week with Zoom, etc. Da 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 da. Okay, I, I just can't afford it. So I'd say, Shauna, okay, I've got a suggestion for you. How would you like to have unlimited access to me, face to face, one on one, for a year? How would you feel about that? Okay, and they'll say, Oh, I couldn't afford it. I said, I haven't told you what the price is yet. If you could have that. How would you feel? And they, I mean, 99.9 are going to say that sounds pretty darn good to me, right? But again, what's the, what's the cost, right? So I say to them, this is what I'm going to Look, suggest. What's the investment, Peter? What's the yeah. investment? <laughs> That's what it is, investment. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> what you, <laughs> you know, I lost my track now. What? What you do is, what you say to them is this, as far as the investment is concerned, you say, look, it's going to cost you, say, I'm making this up an example, $1,000 for a year, right? And you get unlimited access to me anytime you want, one-on-one. -on -one. But there's one contingency, and that is this. First of all, they are laser-focused Zoom sessions. They're 15 minutes only, right? That's it. Secondly, you can't book the next session with me until you finish the homework for the for the first session. All right. And I can tell you, Shauna, this works. It's a really simple way of getting people love the idea of having been able to have access to you. But you know what? When they realize they've got to implement the homework, the chances of if they book with you once every week, that's the equivalent of 20 bucks a week. Mm -hmm. Right. But you don't take a, a weekly payment. This is an upfront payment because you want them to be committed and have their skin in the game. Does that make sense? And it's there. You, they have to hold themselves accountable to get the homework done in order to qualify for the next time with you. So you're putting the ball in their court. Can you see mm -hmm. where I'm coming from? Yeah. A, a bit of a accountability kind of nudge. It is. But at the same time, it's giving them the opportunity to speak with Shauna on an unlimited number of occasions, provided they do the work that's necessary. In other words, go back to the thing. Do you have the courage to make the changes in order to get the, the, the things that you want, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes, it makes complete sense. So what are some of the tools that you would recommend for someone okay. who, who's gonna okay. go into these sales conversations? <laughs> we're going to we're going to try and show this, but we can't make the darn thing work. First of all, when 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 you have built a relationship with someone and it's got to the point, and I don't want to go through all the details, but it's got to the point where you are going to say to them, Shauna, would it be a problem if I left you my calendar link so we could get on a call together to discuss a little bit more? So I'm asking you permission, can I give you the calendar link? I'm doing it expecting a no answer, not a yes answer. Would it be a problem, right? I'm again putting a ball in your court. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then if you say yes and you book the call with me, all right? So then once you book the call with me and I use Calendly, for example, then I know your email address. And what I do then is I send you, and you've booked it for a certain period of time, so then I send you a video, and it's, it's not a personalized video, it's a video I use for everybody, right? And it goes for one minute. And it, all it simply says, and anyone can do this, simply says, I have, I'm looking forward with great excitement to, to working with you in our session together. And 
I show them, which we can't show now, I show them a schematic of what I'm going to take them through, right, in the call. So they can see this is not a sales pitch because they're still there thinking this could be a sales pitch, right? Mm -hmm. So I show them a schematic and the schematic is aimed at one thing. In my case here, it's called, mine are called performance assessment calls. How to make more memorable moments for your clients. Mm -hmm. That's what my call is all about, okay? Because that's what my coaching is all about. And so I, this, this schematic takes them through the four steps that this session is going to take them through. So I send them the schematic and I send them a one minute video showing them the schematic, okay, saying this is what we're going to be doing. And I'm really looking forward to because I've got some, I've looked at your profile and I've got some really clever ideas. I think we can have some really exciting times together. Mm -hmm. Don't be late. Don't be late. So that's a pre call <laughs> one minute video. All right. Then they get on the call and I go through the schematic with them. Okay. When they finish that, then we get to the point where I'm saying, well, Shauna, where'd you like to go from here? Because I've actually clarified what your problem is, right? And you've agreed to it and you've committed to it and you've got all that stuff. Where do you want to go from here? And my, most people will say, well, can you help me? <laughs> or what can I do? Or whatever it is. But it's you giving them the power to do that. That's my point right what can i do and so that's where you become a leader right and that's what you do and so then i show them another tool that i have which is their journey i, and I call it the solopreneur's business journey because i deal i specialize with solopreneurs right and i show them the journey i'm going to take them on mm -hmm. all right so they can see it step by step by step okay so it's a visual thing so they're the three tools that i i use along with voice clip tools to make things as simple as possible. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's, uh, those are really handy. And I think, I think for the different types of people, especially even myself who are very, very visual, it really does help to kind of seal everything together. So it's less questions at the end of the, when they, when they get on the call or less, less, I guess less anxiousness, I should say. Yeah, I want them on the call. I want them to be excited with and full of energy to be on the call. Yeah. Because they can see real value in what they're going to get. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like it, it, it when you're doing it that way, I think that's a great tip because it really does take away that anxiousness. So they really know what to expect. And it's just a matter of formulating their, their thoughts on what they want at the end. So, no, that's really good. So we could go on forever, Peter. So <laughs> this is such a such a meaty topic. And I really love the sales conversation because it's such an important part of the business that and it's such an important part, but so many people struggle with it. So, you know, I want to know in a, what are three tips that you can share with the audience? Three tips. <laughs> Okay, first of all, you make sure you empower your potential client at every chance you've got and you and you create memorable moments for them at every chance you've got. And the reason is because when you when you empower them, they own it. Mm -hmm. They own the decision. They are you are not telling them what they need to do. They have come to that decision themselves. All right, this is a very powerful way of, of working with people. And it's, there's no trickery involved. It's all based on ethics, empathy, and honesty. But you have taken them on a journey that empowered them to come to a sit. Wow. Wow. And so they own it, right? And the, the next part is then you need to empower them to make the best buying decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. It may not be with you. All right. But it doesn't matter because you can't lose. I said earlier, if you do the right thing with a with a potential client, they may become a client of yours. But if not, they will appreciate the service you've given them and they'll become an advocate. So you can't lose. All right. Does that make sense? No, and no. Three things. Stop. Stop pressuring people. OK. <laughs> Stop uh, pursuing them. Stop pursuing them. Oh, my God. That is... Stop, uh, stop I think... persuading them. 
Don't do that anymore. Don't do that anymore. Okay. Be genuine, be authentic, and more importantly, show that you have made mistakes. Show your transparency and vulnerability. I do that with many people all the time because I make whop on mistakes, right? You really do. But when people do that, guess what happens, Shauna? All of a sudden, they see you as ordinary. Mm -hmm. but they can relate with you. But then they see that you've achieved something, so then they can see you are extraordinary as well. So you see how you can put two together? Yeah. So you can so they'll resonate with you, then they can be inspired by you. And when you do that, then you're in a situation to provide the best advice possible. I love that. Yeah. So that those are three good tips. So what's next for you, Peter? What's next for me? I just love serving and supporting people who have the courage to, to make the changes in their lives. That's what I love to do, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not easy. I know it's not easy for people to transform themselves. But I also it's not easy, I know it's not easy for them to find someone they can relate to, that they mm -hmm. can trust, they can resonate with, okay? So, and we, we all appeal to different people, right? So my, my how do you say it? My future is to continue to serve people as much as I can. I mean, I'm 76 years of age and I have got a stack of energy. Thank goodness. Okay. I don't know how long that's going to last, right? But I want to be working with people for as long as I can because I love it. It's a passion of mine. Yes. Okay. So where can people find you, Peter? Because I'm sure people will have questions and there will be people who will resonate with you. And I would love for them to learn more, to to be able to connect with you more and not just in the group. So where can people find you? I'll make it easy. Here's two things. One, PeterBeckenham.com, right? PeterBeckenham.com forward slash kick ass. K-I-C-K-A-S-S. -S. Excuse the vulgarity. That is a 15-minute session with me, no strings attached. We just spoke about it in our thing, where I'm going to help you clarify what your biggest problem is when it comes to sales. So prettybeckham.com forward slash kick ass. Right. The other one is prettybeckham.com forward slash care, C-A-R-E. Okay, that's my link tree thing, and you can just select whatever interests you. Those are good. So, so peterbeckham.com slash care for his link tree of all his suite or menu of services yeah. that he serves. A whole, whole stack of things there. And yeah. peterbeckham.com forward slash kick ass to actually work with me for 15 minutes while I sort out your number one sales challenge with no strings attached because right. I don't believe in that rubbish. Yes. So, there you go. So, if you are struggling with your sales conversation, Peter is offering up 15 minutes of his time to do that, to help you to get clear on that or to just understand what some of the issues are, because we talked about no free advice, really. <laughs> but we'll talk, but it is about really getting to that clarifying moment so we understand exactly what you might need so you, you can start off at a good place instead of kind of trying to find things in the dark. Correct. And if, yeah. on that kick ass call, I want them to be honest. You really have to be honest with yourself. I can't help you if you're not honest. If you're having a problem with sales, you're going to think, what in the heck is it? And I'll help you clarify it. Okay. And then I'll give you a suggestion how to overcome it. And then it's up to you. Awesome. So thank you again, Peter, for joining me to for always being in the group and being active, sharing your wonderful, wonderful insights. So again, guys, if there's anything that resonated with you, Peter is offering up that 15 minute uh, free consultation to, to help you to kind of get through that, you know, whatever's going on in your head around sales to get more clear on your, on your sales, your sales problem. So take him up on that offer. If you, if that's something that you need, um, and if you want to learn more about his suite of services, it's peterbeckham.com slash care. All right. So have a wonderful day, everyone. And Peter, thank you again. Many blessings from Thailand. Take care. Take care.